a bar mitzvah is like the biggest deal in a Jewish Orthodox boy's life. It's presented and believed to be the moment you become a man. The irony was that the Torah portion that I read was Leviticus 18.22, the parts that talk about homosexuality and that it's forbidden. And so it was just fate that I ended up having the Torah portion that I would read to, you know, hundreds of people that was condemning me. Over the next couple of years, I was really living with a ton of shame. I wanted help for being gay. I wanted to not be gay. I wanted to not have this problem. Gay people lived in the West Village in Manhattan. They didn't live in Crown Heights and they were not part of our community. In Crown Heights and in Orthodox communities, you don't want to stand out. You want to fit in. So in 2007, conversion therapy was I think it was socially accepted, but it also wasn't something that was very much talked about either. I turned 18, and two weeks later, I found Jonah, and that was the beginning of that nightmare. Jonah was targeting Orthodox Jews like me. They were putting ads in Orthodox newspapers. The weekends, they were like this 48 hours controlled environment where you didn't have a watch, you didn't have a phone. They would do these processes, of what they called them, where you were supposed to say, you know, if you're like me and you were uh, attracted to all types of men, then like walk in the circle with me. And so everyone would walk together in the circle of shame. Saturday was like the really intense stuff where everyone would have about 45 minutes to reenact uh, a traumatic incident in their life. This was called guts work, having people relive being bullied or uh, a family member dying. Some people, they would like tie them up with duct tape and then everyone would yell at them like, you're a faggot, you're good for nothing, or the voice of a father or a mother. Um, and they would just cause this chaotic experience. There were so many guys who, as this was happening, as they were being held, they were just bawling. It was 2008. I was in a really vulnerable place because I wasn't changing. I was in no man's land. I wasn't like part of Jonah anymore or going to their stuff, but I also wasn't like, I wasn't gay, I wasn't out. But I met someone and he was part of JQY. Right, and traveling is really difficult. It's like a nightmare. These people saved my life. They were in the right place in the right time. They had their own stories and their own experiences, many of whom had actually gone to Jonah or knew about Jonah. In our support group, people would talk about what was going on in their life. Uh, some people were at the same time going to Jonah and, uh, and were at, at, at JQY. And they started talking about what, went, what was actually going on at Jonah. So we thought at that point, Jonah was just not just an option. It was like, there was a danger. And then finally, the Southern Poverty Law Center decided they were going to bring a lawsuit for fraud against conversion therapy. And they wanted to, to do it. It begins volume one, uh, the video deposition, like a continuation of the video deposition of Heim Levin in the matter of Michael Ferguson versus Jonah et al. Mr. Levin, we know that you had, because you, what you told us, 
uh, been in the presence of uh, other men, uh, obviously, if you were having anonymous sexual encounters with men, presumably you would be naked with them. Uh, why was an, uh, a non-sexual thing where Mr. Downey was standing five feet away uh, when you were naked uh, so upsetting to you when you had been in the presence of, of men that you didn't even know in a naked state? What, what was uh, so upsetting to you about being uh, naked with Mr. Downey going through this exercise? Okay, well, for starters, when I had intimate encounters with other men, it was consensual, which means I decided to take my clothes off willingly. I wasn't forced or pushed or encouraged or told that that's what I had to do for the work. Um, also, like I've said many times, I objected to this session to Mr. Downey multiple times and he didn't respect that. So combined with that and his instruction to hold my penis in front of him, I was very upset later on because I felt violated. The, when I had so we had a four and a half week trial the theme of their defense was that we were just disgruntled ex-community members. We got recruited by radical homosexual activists and brought this lawsuit because we wanted to advance the gay rights agenda. The jury came back with a verdict within like two hours and we won. Uh, we won. It was the ultimate validation. The deal was that they would shut down, they would pay us a certain amount in exchange for shutting down and never doing conversion therapy in New Jersey again and a bunch of other things. I mean, the main benefit of, of like the trial and that exposure was that it was there was exposure. People became aware. I think the state of, of being LGBTQ in orthodoxy has gone from the whole house is on fire to just some of the rooms are on fire. It's still an emergency. Over 73% of the participants that come into JQY report feeling suicidality or thinking about suicide. That is incredibly high, very disturbing. A therapist who practices conversion therapy today does not say that they practice conversion therapy. They're like, oh no, a sexual addiction. So the, the kids don't even know that they're in conversion therapy when they are in conversion therapy. So people will say, Jonah's done. We don't do that anymore. Um, but the principle and the, the, the premise of the, any type of therapy that's aimed at, quote unquote, fixing people or making people normal or changing them, it's a lie. When I realized that I'm okay, that I can be gay, I found this inner peace that had eluded me for so long. It felt like my whole life I was just trying to find this balance, this equilibrium. And it was just all I wanted. And then I found it. And once I had it, I was never going to give it back. I feel like the luckiest person in the world. I'm with an amazing person, and I wouldn't trade it in for anything.